Hey everyone, now that we have an understanding of our settings, as well as our service templates, it's time to show you how to create a job and an invoice on the desktop. Let's head over to our calendar. The first thing I like to do is show my map on the left when creating a job. You can do that by clicking on the map button. Please note that the calendar must be in the day, week, or two week view. Otherwise, you will not see the map button. For example, if we look at our month view on the calendar, that map button will not show. So we're actually going to go back to the week view. To create a job, we can simply click on the day or in the time slot we'd like to schedule the job. Then click on new job. We're going to choose our customer, then our location. So if there's more than one service address, you can choose here. And then we're going to select our service template. And here's a cool trick. If you're scheduling a job but have not created a service template yet, you can actually choose add new service right here. And you can create a brand new service template directly from this page. However, we're actually going to use our bi-monthly template that we've already created. After choosing our template, all of the information we predefined will generate, such as the job frequency, our invoice, and our default materials. Because we chose our bi-monthly template, the job is going to repeat monthly, every two months, it's going to repeat by the day of the week, and it's going to end never, meaning it will just keep repeating on your calendar. Um, and the summary says that it's going to repeat every two months on the first Monday, and that's because we're scheduling the first job on the first Monday of the month. And we've also have, we also have this job set to be always confirmed, that we've also established in our service template. The, on the invoice, the price associated with your template is intended to be a general cost, but this is where you can actually fine tune your invoice for that customer individually. So now that this is actually for a customer, we can edit their price if we wanted to. So maybe John will have a little bit different price. And you can also add a discount if you'd like. On the next tab over, you can assign materials from the material master list, or you or your technician can always edit or add these out in the field. Now, once we click save, we've actually created a job on our calendar which is this job tile right here. Since the service is bi-monthly, and I believe we have it set to repeat every two months on the first Monday. So if we jump ahead two months, we're gonna go back to our calendar. We'll go ahead one, two months. You'll see here that the job is automatically repeating on the calendar. The job is a bit lighter shade because it's a recurring job, but the previous job has not been completed yet. If we try to open this job, we'll be prompted that there's an incomplete job in the past and that will need to be completed first. And so this is just another way to ensure that there won't be any jobs falling through the cracks. And this is also why the job status should always be changed to complete whenever a job is finished. Okay, let's jump back on our calendar. To reschedule the job, you can easily click and drag and drop wherever you would like on the schedule. If the job is recurring jobs attached, it'll always ask you if you'd like to move this job only or this job in all recurring. So if it is a one-time thing, you'd probably want to move this job only. If you wanted to move all of John's bi-monthly services, you can move this job and all recurring.
You can also view schedule change logs by opening up the job, going to the scheduling tab, and then showing change logs here. This way you can always see any scheduling changes. You can also reschedule you can also schedule and reschedule between calendars if you have more than one. So for example, if we're looking at Blake and Jane as our technicians, you can always click and drag and drop from one technician schedule over to the other. And since these jobs have recurring jobs attached, as always, it will always ask you if you want to move this job only or this job at all recurring. In this case, we're just going to work off of one schedule. To open the job, you can either double click on the job tile or you can single click and choose open job. Now, a lot of this will be done on the mobile app in the field, but the same functionality is available on the desktop as well. You can check into a job and check out when you're finished. Below is the top note, which is a note that will appear on all of the customer's jobs, and uh, this note is not visible to your clients. So this is where you could add a gate code or any specific instructions for that customer. Below that is the job note. And this note is different than the top note as it only appears on this specific job. Um, the customer cannot see this. This is also only internal. However, this is a note that will be on this specific job, whereas the top note will be on all of the customer's jobs. So this is where you can add any pertinent information regarding the job or even add photos by clicking here on that paperclip. Let's add a note together. And you can even notify other users as well. And if a user is notified, they'll actually get a notification up here in their inbox. So we're going to post this note. Okay, and then clicking this icon will <coughs> make your job note repeat with each recurring job if you'd like. The task manager is a tool that will allow you to set upcoming tasks for yourself or another user. When the due date hits, that user will receive a notification in their task inbox and this is great for remembering to follow up or for renewals. So let's create a task together. Below you can set your due date, you can set a time, and then you can assign, assign that to a specific user. Okay, so let's say for example we were going to save. This due date has hit. So now up here in our inbox, if you click, you can see that your task is due. When you're finished, you can always check the box and then mark that as done. If you're on the pro plan, clicking on the plus sign will allow you to sign a document to the job from our document library. For example, a pest control service agreement. So we're going to add a document and we'll choose our form. So these documents can be filled out in the field or from the desktop and then emailed for e-signature. From the desktop, you can actually see a live preview of the document on the left, and then as you fill the form out, you would just click Edit. You can watch that information populate on that form in real time. We won't cover this a whole lot right now, but we will have a video specifically for the Documents feature.
once again, the Materials tab will allow you to assign materials to the job. You can do that by clicking here. And this will allow you to pull from your master material list. This can also be done by yourself or your technician out in the field from the mobile app. Now, if you would like to send your customer documentation of when the technician was there, what was done, and what materials were used, but you do not want to send them a bill, you could always send them a work order. And considering that we can show the check in and out time on the work order, let's actually go ahead and check out of the job first. Now, work orders have a lot of the same information as an invoice, but with no price associated. So, this section up here is our work order section. This is where you can add notes, which are visible to the client. You can take a signature, and then you can either print the work order and send it by email. When you send it by email, it will have a downloadable PDF that will look like this. Okay, and this will show when you were there, any notes, if you wanted to add any notes, any materials that were used. However, you will notice that there's no price associated with the work order. Okay, now if we wanted a price to be associated with it, that's when we would actually look at our invoice. Now there are four invoice statuses. There's draft, sent, void, and write-off. The two I'd like to focus on are draft and sent status. Invoices should always start out in draft status, and while an invoice is in draft, there's not going to be any balance added to the customer's account. So think of a draft invoice as if it's still sitting on your desk and you're not ready to bill the customer just yet. To add the balance to a customer's account, the invoice will need to be changed to sent status, and there are two ways of doing that. One way would be to manually mark that invoice as sent. And this will not actually send it to them, but you're just adding the balance onto their account. You should do this if you're printing an invoice and then sending them a physical copy. That way you can add the balance and that will reflect on their account. So if that was the case, you would just manually mark it as sent. So it would go from draft to sent and then you can print the invoice out. The other way to change an invoice to sent status is to send the invoice by email, which can be done over here. If you have Stripe or Square connected, your email will have a pay online option. And if you're on the pro plan, you can also email your invoices for e-signature, which will allow your customer to sign directly from their email. In this case, let's just say the customer mailed us a check and we'd like to add a payment. So we're going to click here for adding a payment. You can enter the amount. This customer actually has credit already on their account, so if we wanted to, we could apply that to this invoice. However, in this case, we'll just say this is a check payment. So the invoice amount was 133.65. They're paying by check. If you have a credit card saved on file for the customer, you'll also have the option to click on the credit card number here as well and use that as the payment method. So we'll just say this is going to be by check. You can add a check number here as well. Now we're going to add payment. Once an invoice is paid, you can click here to send a receipt by email. And when you do, it's going to have a downloadable copy of that receipt that will look like this. Pretty similar to the work order, except it's showing that there was a price associated with each item, that there's no amount due, and that it's been paid. Okay, and we can still see our materials listed at the bottom here.
Once all the work has been complete and you're ready to close out the job, always remember to change the job status to complete. This can be done by an office admin or a technician in the field, but this is extremely important as it will unlock the next recurring job. So we're going to change this here to complete. And by doing this, when John's bi-monthly service shows up on our calendar two months from now, it will allow us to open the job and repeat the same process. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope this helped provide an understanding of how to schedule jobs and invoice your customers. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to 855-536-7470 or start a live chat and we'll be more than happy to help. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.